to give the Christ some time. <laughs> Heavenly King, Heavenly Spirit, as we give our present living life and treasure the blessings of the giver of life, come dwell within us, then for every winner, save our souls as good men. Glory to God in the highest earth, peace and men's will. Glory to God in the highest earth, peace and men's will. Glory to God in the highest earth, peace and men's will. Lord, you're welcome to my life. Blessed is the kingdom of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In peace from above, and the salvation of our souls, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. In peace of the whole world, for the welfare of the holy churches of God, and the union of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For this holy temple and those who enter here with faith for reverence and the fear of God, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For many thousands of Tony, for Archbishop and Daniel, for the reverend presbyters, for the deacons of Christ, for all the clergy and the people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our God loving and God protecting country, the United States of America, for the government, our force, and for all the for our God loving and God protected ancestral homeland and trained and for all our ancestral homelands and for all the people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the city and for every city and community and for the faithful who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the weather and abundance of the fruits of the earth and for peaceful times. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those who travel by land, sea, and air, for the sake of suffering for captives, and for the salvation of them all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, and distress, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. And for him, most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious, to the birth of God, and ever virgin Mary, together with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in all our lives to Christ our God. To the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of the ages. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. And all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget that all his benefits. O oh, forgive him, so your iniquity, who kills all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit, who crowns you with steadfast love and mercy. Who satisfies you with good as long as you live, so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord works in vacation and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is compassionate and merciful, long suffering and of great goodness. He will not always try, nor will he keep his anger forever. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens, and his kingdom rules over all. Bless the Lord, O you his angels, 
you mighty ones who do his word, hearkening to the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers that do his will. Bless the Lord, all of his works, in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, all of my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Blessed art thou, Lord. Again, again, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remember him, most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious, and the birth giver of God, and ever and Mary, together with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves to one another in all our life, to Christ our God. Oh, oh, oh. Glory to the majesty, yours the kingdom and the power and the glory of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord to my life. I will sing praises to my God for as long as I live. Put not your trust in who is in the sons of men, in whom there is no salvation. His spirit will depart from him into his earth to return. On that day all his plans perish. The Lord will be forever. Your God is I am unto generation and generation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of the ages of men. Only be God, and God may be immortal, Word of God, who for our salvation is <coughs> to be incarnate of the Holy Theotokos and ever virgin Mary, who without change to Become an adverse to signify, O Christ our God, trampling down death by death, who art God of the Holy Trinity, glorified to the Father and the Holy Spirit. Again, again, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord, have mercy. Remember him, most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious things, the birth pure of God, and ever virgin Mary, together with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in all our lives. To Christ our God. For you are a good and loving God, and to you we give glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. In thy kingdom, remember us, O Lord. For when thou comest in thy kingdom, blessed are the food in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who come and this have the righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the poor in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers. For they shall be called the sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake. 
Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and that he is of age. Amen. For we for our first God, God, let us be attentive, peace be unto all. spirit seizes him, it throws him to the ground, and my son foams at the mouth, grinds his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to cast it out, but they were not able. Jesus answered him, unbelieving generation, how long shall I put up with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring him to me. They brought the son to him, and when he saw Jesus, the spirit immediately convulsed the boy. 
He fell to the ground and rolled about, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood he answered, often it has thrown him both into the fire and into the water in order to destroy him. But if you are able to do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus said to him, if you are able, all things are possible to the one who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out with tears, I believe, help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to him, You mute and deaf spirit, I command you come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit cried out, convulsed greatly, and came out of the boy. He became as dead so much that many said, He is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and raised him up, and the boy stood up. When Jesus entered into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? He answered, this kind can come out by nothing except by prayer and fasting. They left that place and passed through Galilee, and Jesus did not want any one to know, to know it. He was teaching his disciples and told them, the Son of Man is to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him, and when he is killed, he will rise again on the third day. At that time, great crowds from Galilee, Neapolis, Jerusalem, and Judea, and from beyond the Jordan followed him. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up to the mountain, and when he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to speak and to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you, persecute you, and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Indeed, this is how they persecuted the prophets before you. Glory to the o Lord. Glory to Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory forever. Glory forever. So now we're continuing our, our rather um, eccentric celebration of the Divine Liturgy with just Nick and myself here and all of you uh, watching, hopefully all of you watching online. I wanted to talk a little bit today about, about one thing that I, I think we, we, we often get wrong, and that's the nature of the spiritual life. Often we think about the spiritual life as just sort of some manifestation of our, of our psychological life. And when we think about it in these terms, we make the spiritual life subjective. We make it simply a matter of, of our feelings, of our sentiments, of maybe the thoughts that we have about God or the feelings we have for him or for our neighbors. And yet, like the moral life, the spiritual life is objective. It's not objective in the way that mathematics is objective. Math is objective, meaning that 2 plus 2 equals 4, always and everywhere, no matter who you are, no matter when you are in human history. But the spiritual life has an objectivity which is different. The spiritual life is objective in the way that geography is objective. What I mean by that is this. Geography tells us where we are in space and time. It gives us a location. And the objectivity of the spiritual life is like that. We have a location. We, we stand someplace relative to God. The spiritual life is, first of all, then knowing objectively where I stand relative to God and then what I need to do to draw closer to God. 
The Catholic philosopher Peter Kreef says that this is a matter of prudence. And prudence, he says, asks two questions. Who do I want to be at the end of my life? And what are the next steps that I need to take along that path? This is what we mean when we talk about the spiritual life as objective. It's about going from where I am to the kingdom of God. And the fact of the matter is, is that the steps I take either draw me closer to God or move me further away from it. We know the things that draw us further away from God. Those are sins. Those are what Paul in the epistle this morning calls the works of the flesh. When I commit a sin, I step back from God. Not that God steps back from me, but that I step back from him. I, When I sin, I become less like the person I have been called to be and who I can be in the kingdom of God. This then makes the spiritual life a matter of, of prudence, of learning what I need to do to draw closer to God and knowing what I specifically need to do to draw closer to God. Often when people talk about the spiritual life as objective, that ends up creating or makes ends up making them think that there is a recipe book, a thing, a series of things that we do that if we do them will result in our entrance into the kingdom of God. But it's more difficult than that. It's more mysterious, it's more complex, more complex because the spiritual life is about how we choose to exercise our freedom in the presence of God. And that freedom doesn't allow for us to have a sort of a one-size-fits-all process. To be sure, there are things which are always and everywhere deadly to our relationship with Jesus Christ. But the next step that I'm supposed to draw, take to draw close to him, that depends upon my circumstances. That depends upon my age. That depends upon the situation that I find myself in life. That changes for everyone. There are some things, though, that we know that undermine, like I said, the spiritual life. St. John Climacus, whose memory we celebrate today, St. John of the Ladder, talks about how there are 30 steps to the kingdom of God. And he was writing for monks. But each one of these steps, he says, brings us closer. One of the great temptations, he said, in the spiritual life is vainglory. Vainglory is that sin that says, makes me want to be noticed by other people. And he says that some people who are dressed in fine, bright clothes do so to attract attention, but other people dress in rags for the very same reason. Some people keep a strict fast, he says, so that they can earn the praise of their neighbors. Others people feast so that they can win the acclaim of others. Some give to the poor, some are wealthy. Any good thing that we do, he says, has the potential of being corrupted by vain glory. Taking St. John as our cue, this means that if I want to draw closer to God, I first of all need to know myself. I need to know the ways in which I'm likely to fall, the ways in which I'm likely to try to earn the attention of other people, the ways in which I am tempted to do the right thing for the wrong reason. This is why St. Anthony the Great says that he who would know God must first know himself. I need to know the ways in which I can fall off that path to God. And then knowing that, I avoid those things. I avoid those traps. Okay, this is great. But what do I do? I still haven't told you. What do you do? I live my life, but I live my life in a particular kind of way. To be sure, I, I need to be baptized. I need to receive the sacraments. I need to have a life of daily prayer and of reading the scriptures. But above all else, I need to understand that God has shown me the way to himself in his creation. This is not pantheism. This is not worshiping 
creation. It is rather what St. Paul says in the beginning of Romans, that the invisible God has made himself manifest in and through his creation. If I pay attention to the world around me, if I pay attention to the things that I do, very quickly I begin to notice that God is always teaching. How does he teach? How do we understand that? How do we come to aware that of that teaching? Well, that requires that we learn to think in a particular way. We need to understand that all creation reflects God and that I can learn about God by looking at creation. And we know this. We look at a sunset and we're overcome with awe and we think, oh, if the sunset is beautiful, so beautiful, how much more beautiful is God? We look at a mountain and we think how powerful it is and we think, well, how much more powerful is God? But I also learn how to draw closer to God by the things that happen to me in my daily life. Maybe I, I have an argument with my wife, or maybe I snap at someone in the, in the line at the grocery store. Maybe I entertain a, a, a wicked thought. I begin to see if I pay attention to myself, and especially if I pay attention to myself in light of the gospel, all the different ways that I fall away from and draw closer to God. Over the course of time, I learn to avoid those things that undermine me personally. And I learn to do those things that draw me closer to God. My wife will tell you I have an awful sense of direction. Thank God for GPSs. I, 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 just, I just get lost all the time. I need someone to tell me how to go from where I am to where I want. We find this in our spiritual lives, in the scriptures, in the fathers. But above all, we find it in the life of Christ. I said last week, God in his mercy seems to have taken from the church great land. We've been bereft, we've lost our beautiful liturgical tradition, not forever, but for a time. And my hope would be that having now suffered that loss, that we would take the time to withdraw into ourselves, not in a way of trying to hide from life around us, but that we would quiet, that we could still ourselves, that we would take time to pray and to reflect and to ask ourselves who we are, to get to know ourselves, but to get to know ourselves in light of the gospel. If we do this, then we'll begin to see the clues, we'll begin to see the, the lessons that God has to draw us closer to himself. But it does require an openness of heart on my part to see those things. And to be honest, what I've discovered in the last few weeks is that my heart is not as open as I thought it was. I may not be a horrible sinner, but I'm still a sinner. I'm still disinclined to do the things that draw me closer to God. I need to stop that. We all need to stop. St. John Climacus, St. John the Latter said, there are 30 rungs for, for the monk to travel to the kingdom of God. For you and I, there may be 60 rungs, or maybe there's only going to be 20. The number of steps really doesn't matter. What matters is that we take those steps, that we do those things that draw us closer to God. That we pray, that we fast, that we go to Confession, that we read scripture, that we receive the sacraments. But that has to be done. Right now, these things have sort of fallen away for, from us because of the situation of the pandemic. Hopefully, on the other side of this, we'll come back with a greater longing, a greater desire, a greater thirst for the sacraments. And that this greater desire won't simply be a theoretical desire, but that it will move us to action. So maybe that's the lesson for this time on this day. Let God take this time of absence to foster in all of us a greater desire for him, for his kingdom, for his sacraments, for the life of his church. Let us pray.
the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us all say with all our soul, with all our mind, let us pray. Lord, have mercy. Lord Almighty God of our fathers, we pray, hear us and have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Have mercy to God, according to great mercy, we pray, hear us, and have mercy. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the Father, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and the Lord, and for our brother, presbyters, higher bounds, and for all our brethren in Christ. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for our God, loving and God, the Christian country, the United States of America, the government, our force of all the people. For our God, loving and God, the American ancestral homeland, we pray for all our ancestral homelands, and for all their peoples. That the Lord God may help and aim them in all things and protect them from every enemy and adversary. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for the Holy Orthodox Patriarch and for the ever memorable founders of this Holy Temple. And for all Orthodox Christians who are in this life before us, who here and elsewhere lie asleep in the Lord. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Again, we pray for mercy, life, peace, health, salvation, God's visitation, forgiveness, remission, sins, and the service of God. All the members of this holy temple, that they may be delivered from all affliction, wrath, danger, spiritual and physical need, and that they may live in peace, good health, and well being all the days of their life. All merciful Lord, hear us and have mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Again, we pray for those who bring offerings and do good works in this holy little Bible temple, for those who serve, and those who sing, for all the people here present, who await your great and abundant mercy. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. O Lord Jesus Christ, in your loving care, you travel through towns and villages, curing every disease and illness. At your command, the sick were made well. Come to our aid now in the midst of this, the global spread of the coronavirus, that we may experience your healing love. Be with the families of those who are sick or have died. May they regain their strength and health and quality medical care. As they worry and grieve, defend them from illness and despair. Heal us from fear, which prevents nations from working together and neighbors from helping one another. Be with the doctors, nurses, researchers, and all medical professionals who seek to heal and help those afflicted and those who themselves who put themselves at risk in the process. Heal us from our pride, which can make us claim in vulnerability to a disease that knows no borders. Be with the leaders of all nations. Give them the foresight to act with charity and true concern for the well-being of the people they are meant to serve. Give them the wisdom to invest in long-term solutions that will help prepare for or prevent future outbreaks. O Master, Lord, our Savior, healer of all, stay by our side in this time of uncertainty and sorrow. Whether we are at home or abroad, surrounded by many people suffering from this illness or only a few, stay with us as we endure and mourn, persist, and prepare. For you are merciful and loving God, as we give glory to the Father, to the Son, and the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Thank you, let's pray to the Lord. That he would teach them the word of truth, that he reveal to them the gospel of righteousness, that he would guide them to the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, help them stay there, have mercy on them, and preserve them, O God, by your praise. Catechumens, by your heads to the Lord. And with us, most glorified, most honorable, majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and through the ages of ages. Amen. Lord of catechumens, catechumens depart. Lord of catechumens, let us the catechumens remain. Let us the faithful again, again in peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Wisdom, for to you are, you are glory, honor, and worship. Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Again, again, in peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Wisdom, let us guard by your might, we give glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen.
Metropolitan is eminence and Tony Archbishop is eminence, Daniel always now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom, all orthodox hierarchs, the presbyterate, the diaconate Christ, the priests, the monastic orders, always now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. May the Lord our God remember his kingdom, our God loving and God protected country, the United States of America, the President, the Congress, the Supreme Court. All civil authorities of those serving in the armed forces, our God-loving and God-protected ancestral homeland, Ukraine, all our ancestral homelands, and all their peoples always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. And may the Lord our God remember all of you and those for whom you pray, and all Orthodox Christians always, now and ever, and unto the ages of ages.
to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Lord, gifts are set forth. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy temple and those who enter here with faith forever to the fear of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. Let this whole day may be perfectly peaceful and stainless. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. The angel of peace, the faithful guide and guard into our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Give us and remission of our sins and transgressions. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. All that is good and beneficial to our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. And we may live our lives in peace and repentance. Let us ask of the Lord. Grant O Lord. Lord bring an end to our life painless, blameless, peaceful, and good defense. Before the dread judgment seat of Christ, let us ask of the Lord. Grant this, O Lord. Remember your most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious things that are the of God, and never burn to together with all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another in all our lives to Christ our God. Lord, dear o Lord. Lord our God, have created us, bringing us, have created us, bringing us into Present life, you have shown us the way to salvation, bringing us to the revelation of enemy mysteries. You placed us in this service with the power of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, Lord, may it please you that we be the servants of your new covenant and use of your holy mysteries. Accept us to approach your holy altar according to the abundance of your mercy, that we may be worthy to offer you this rational sacrifice about the shedding of blood for our sins before the failing of the people. Which you accept on your most heavenly and noetic altars and aroma of spiritual fragrance and send down upon its return the grace of your Holy Spirit. Behold us, God, and consider our worship accepting you that you accepted the gifts of Abel, the sacrifice of Noah, the whole burnt offerings of Abraham, the spiritual offices of Moses and Aaron, the peace offerings of Samuel, even as you accepted the true worship from the holy apostles. So also, Lord, in your loving kindness, accept these gifts from the hands of us sinners, that having been counted worthy to blame us in your spiritual holy altar, we may find the reward of the faithful and of the faithful and wise stewards on the fearful day of your just judgment. Through the bondage of your only God, Son, with whom we are blessed, together with your own holy good and life creating spirit, now and ever end of the ages of the ages. Amen. Peace be with you all. And to your spirit. Let us love one another that with one mind we may confess. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity one in essence. And on evil The doors, the doors in wisdom, let us be attentive. the one God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God. The only begotten, begotten of the Father before all nations. Lord of the true God of true God. Begotten of me, the word message to the Father, by whom all things were made. Who for us and for our salvation came down from the heavens. And was honored of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. And he was crucified for us on the conscious pilot and suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures. And the same in the heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the living and the dead whose kingdom shall have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son together is Christian and glorified, who spoke by the prophets, in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead. And the life of the world to come. Amen.
Let us stand or ride, let us stand in fear, let us be attentive that we may present the holy offering in peace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God the Father and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Let us lift up our hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. His power and might to worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Singing the triumphal hymn, proclaiming, crying out, and saying, Holy, 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 Lord of Sabbath, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Spoke to us through the mouths of your servants, your servants, the prophets, you foretold to us the salvation which is to come. You gave the laws and aid, and you appointed angels and guardians, and when we for the fullness of time has come. You spoke to us through your son himself, and you made whom you made the angels, being the brightness of your glory, the express likeness of your entity, and upholding everything by the word of his power. He deemed it not robbery to equal to you, God and Father, but although he had got he was God before the ages, yet he appeared on earth and lived with humans. He was the incarnate, he was incarnate of a holy virgin by emptying himself and taking on the form of a servant, becoming conformed to the humility of our body, that he might conform us to the image of his glory. For since he was, or since by humanity death entered the world and by sin death. So your only begotten Son, who is in your bosom, God and Father, was well pleased to be born of a woman, the Holy Virgin of God, and of a Virgin Mary. He was born in the flesh, that he might condemn sin in his flesh, that they who were dead in Adam might be made alive in your Christ himself. And becoming a citizen in this world, giving ordinances of salvation, he removed the delusion of idols, bringing us to a knowledge of you, the true God and Father, having acquired for us, acquired us for himself as his only people, a royal priesthood and a holy nation. And being purified with water and sanctified by the Holy Spirit, he gave himself as a ransom to death by which we were held captive, being sold under sin. And having descended into the death in the midst of the cross, that he might fill all things with himself, he loosened the pains of death, being raised again from the dead on the third day, and he passed for all flesh to resurrection from the dead. For it was not possible that the originator of life should be constrained by corruption, that he might be the first fruits of those who had fallen asleep, and the firstborn from the dead, that he might be all might be all being first in all, and ascended into heaven. He sat at the right hand of your majesty on high, and he shall return to render to everyone according to their words. And he has left with us as a remembrance of the saving passion these things which we have set forth according to his command. For when he was about to go to his voluntary celebrated life, creating death, and the night when he gave himself up for the life of the world, he took bread in his holy and undefiled hands, and when he had shown it to you, God and Father, given thanks, blessed, sanctified, and broken it. Gave to his holy disciples and apostles, saying, Eat this as my body, which is broken for you, for the remission of sin. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, saying, Drink of this, all of you, this is my blood, who comes to shed for you and for many, for the remission of sin.
Us who partake of the one bread and cup in the communion of the Holy Spirit, and grant that not one of us may partake of that holy body and blood of your Christ before judgment or condemnation, but that we may find mercy and grace with all the saints who have been acceptable to you throughout the ages. Our forefathers, fathers, patriarchs, prophets, apostles, preachers, evangelists, martyrs, confessors, ascetics, and every righteous spirit who has completed this life in faith, especially our most holy, most pure, most blessed, and glorious Lady. The birth giver of God and ever virgin Mary. In me rejoice, and all the Lord of grace. Have we created thee? Oh, sovereign angels, and all mankind. Oh, consecrated temple and super sensual paradise, glory of the virgin, of whom God was incarnate and became a little child, and it is our God before all the ages. For he laid on thy womb a throne, and thy body did he make for spacious and sacred. In need of the whole creation rejoice, for the Lord will have grace, for among the first, remember our Metropolitan of Eminence, Antonio, Archbishop of Eminence, Daniel, grant that they may serve your holy churches in peace. Keep them safe, the honor, and good health for many years, rightly teaching the word of your truth. And grant that with one voice and one heart may glorify and praise your most honorable, majestic name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. And may the mercy of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ be with all of you. And with your spirit. Having commemorated all the saints again and again in peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the precious gifts offered and sanctified, let us pray to the Lord. And the loving God, who see the most holy, heavenly, and noetic altars of fragrant spiritual offering, may in return send that upon his divine grace and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. For our deliverance from all affliction, wrath, danger, distress, let us pray to the Lord. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. At this old day, may be perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless. Let us ask of the Lord. Angel of peace, the faithful guide, guide of our souls and bodies. Let us ask of the Lord. In this and remission of our sins and transgressions, let us ask of the Lord. All that is good and beneficial to our souls and peace for the world. Let us ask of the Lord. Lord. Our Christian end our life, painless, blameless, peaceful, and a good defense before the grand judgment seat of Christ. Let us ask of the Lord. 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 Having asked for the unity and faith and the communion of the Holy Spirit, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life. To Christ our God. And count us worthy of us to uphold us without condemnation to dare call upon you, the heavenly God, as Father, and to say, Our Father, what you have, I will be thy name, my King, and Father. I will be thy name, my King, and Father. 
us in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord and has revealed himself to us. May will God your people and bless your inheritance. We have seen God your light. We have received the heavenly spirit. We have followed the true trade, worshiping the undivided Trinity, who has saved us. Who is now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let our mouth be filled with thy praise, O Lord, that we may sing of thy glory. For thou hast permitted us to partake of thy fully divine, immortal, and life giving this service. Keep us in thy holiness, that all the day we may meditate upon thy righteousness. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us stand aright, having partaken of the divine, holy, most pure, immortal, heavenly life, creating all sinners of Christ. Let us worthily give thanks to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Help us, save us, have mercy on us, and preserve us, O God, by your grace. Lord have mercy. We ask for perfect, holy, peaceful, and sinless day. Let us command ourselves and one another in all our life. To Christ our God. For you are sanctification, we give glory to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, now and ever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Let us depart in peace. Lord, bless those who bless you and sanctify those who trust you. Save your people and bless your inheritance. Protect the fullness of your church. Sanctify those who love the beauty of your house. Glorify them in return by your divine power. Do not partake us of hope in you. Grant peace to your world, to your churches, to those in public service. To our God loving and God protected country, the United States of America. And to our God loving and God protected ancestral homeland, Ukraine, to all our ancestral homelands. To the members of this holy temple, to all your people. For every good and every perfect gift from above coming down from you, the Father of life. Bring you glory, thanksgiving, and worship to the Father, to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. Blessed be the name of the Lord, henceforth and forevermore. Oh, blessing of the Lord, come upon you, divine grace and love for mankind, always, now and ever, and to the ages. Of ages. Amen. Glory to you, O Christ, our God, and our hope. Glory to you. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Father. Bless. May he who rose from the dead, Christ our true God, through the prayers of the most pure and holy Mother, the holy, glorious, and laudable apostles of St. Andrew the First Call, founder of Christ's Holy Church in Ukraine. Of Saint Cyril Methodius, equal to the apostles, teachers of the Slavs, patrons of the Holy Church, of Saint John of the Latter, whose memory we celebrate this day, of our Father among the saints, Basil the Great, Archbishop of Caesarea Cappadocia, whose liturgy we celebrate, and of all the saints, have mercy on us to save us, for as much as He is good and loves mankind. Amen. Amen. Good. So we got through it. Uh, just real quick for those of you who are part of the parish. Uh, we had a parish council meeting last yet yeah, Wednesday afternoon. Um, so we, because uh, Chris resigned from parish council when they, he and his and Susan moved, we need someone who would like to serve on parish council. So if you're interested, would you let me know about that? Um, There's some other things that are going to be on the Slack channel. You can find the minutes of the parish council meeting. Uh, and uh, we are still working on what we're going to do for Pascha. Uh, the safer in place order for the state of Wisconsin goes through um, Bright Friday. So um, we're going to have to figure out you know, what possible will look like for us this year. So, all right. So thank you. And thanks.
ਦੇਖੋ ਜੀ 